All right, so today we're gonna change this Davco filter. This is a fuel water separator filter. Um, as this thing gets dirty, the fuel level in there will climb and climb and climb until it gets to the top, and then it'll clog and you'll start throwing fuel codes. It's the same as a car. You got a clogged fuel filter. The fuel pump can't suck fuel through, so you'll start getting codes. Um, it's very easy to change. The filter is reasonably cheap. It's a 100,000 mile filter, depending on how dirty your fuel is. And uh, I got this one a while back uh, during a PM. I didn't need it changed, so I, I just paid the upgrade charge and had him give me the filter. Uh, it's going to come with three gaskets. Uh, this is this is part number Fleet Guard FS19915. You can see it right there. All right, this thing comes with three gaskets. One of them's right here. I'm not going to pull it out, but it's right there. That's the bottom of the filter. It comes with a big gasket that's going to go right under this locking ring. And then it comes with a small gasket like this, about that big around. And it goes on this tightening nut here at the top. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened to my other gasket, but it's not here. So I'm just going to reuse this top one. I don't recommend doing that, but I've never had to reuse them before. I don't think it'll be a big deal for one time. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. We're going to loosen this locking ring at the top, and that's going to allow air to flow in our globe as we drain the fuel that's inside of it. So this is supposed to only be hand tightened. All right, I'm just going to use a pair of channel locks to gently pop this loose. Don't squeeze too hard. You don't want to break the cap. Somebody really tightened the crap out of it down the last time they changed this. Alright, so just loosen that up. It's going to allow air to flow in there. And the next thing we're going to do is take an empty canister and catch all the dirty fuel coming out of this thing. There is a drain cock underneath here, right here. So what you're going to want to do is take your bottle, put it on that drain cock, and then open it, and all the fuel that's in there is going to drain into this canister. It'll get uh, this black debris in there that'll clog this thing up, so just keep working it until you see it all drain out. Okay, I closed the drain cock. The, the, the um, level is below the filter that I'm going to need to take out, so I'm going to take the top off. And you can see the, the gasket on there that I'm missing from my new filter. That's what you would change right there. We're just going to reuse that one. I'm going to set that over here. And then I'm going to use this wrench. To loosen this thing up. I was in a hotel for about five days while they troubleshoot the thing. They come to find out, oh, it's just this filter full. It's, it's like a $10 filter, the one on my last truck, like a $10 filter. It ended up costing me about $2,000 in hotel bill, downtime, filter, uh, tow bill, and all that. So learn how to change this filter. It's easy to do. And if that, that level ever gets up to the top and your, your truck dies, this should be the first thing you check. If it's full, get out and change it. Save yourself $2,000. All right, so we got the filter out. This is that locking ring. Well, oh, that's really dirty. You can see the dirt coming out of it. Now, there's our gasket. Notice how it's put on there, okay? When we put this back together, you wanna have that gasket perfect. If you mess up that gasket and it comes loose while you're trying to tighten this down, 
within the first 500 miles of driving, you're going to start throwing engine coats for uh, erratic fuel rail pressure. Okay? And that's because this uh, gasket got slipped and you started sucking air into the fuel filter and air is getting into the fuel line. The first two times I had this filter changed at a shop out there in the public, I won't name them, but they slipped this gasket both times and both times I got check engine lights within two or three hundred miles and uh, I, I put inside on it, come to find out it was fuel rail pressure and uh, so I took this thing off and found out they slipped this gasket and it was sucking air into the, the fuel rail. So uh, make sure you get this gasket on right when you seat it. Uh, that's the most important part. All right, I've taken a couple of grocery bags and put a bunch of paper towels in it to catch this fuel that's getting ready to come out of here. Um, it's best after you take this out to take it to a shop so they can properly dispose of it. Um, it actually is illegal to, to improperly dispose of these things. So I'm going to pull up on it to separate the filter from the intake tube. All right, there it is. And the fuel just is draining out the bottom of it. I'm going to give it a second to let all the fuel drain. Okay, and then I'm going to put this filter in this bag. All right, so I'm going to put this, uh, this uh, drain canister back under here, open up the drain cock, and finish draining out this, this diesel. And you can see it dropping down. And there it goes, it emptied out the canister, all right? And it's done draining. So I'm gonna close the drain cock, all of the diesels out of it, and I did that so that I can clean inside that canister because as you can see, there's a bunch of black particles and debris. We're gonna spray some uh, brake cleaner in there and use a rag and we're gonna clean it out. So I'm gonna take some paper towels and put them down in there and try to clean some of that black gunk out of the bottom. I just checked and actually I'm out of brake cleaner. So usually you can spray some brake cleaner in there and open up the drain cock again and it'll run out the bottom. We're just gonna try to clean this up a little bit. Get some of that black stuff out of there. Be careful with your screwdriver head. You don't wanna be scratching this all up. All right, so it's a lot better than it was. It's not going to be perfect. That's what the filter's for, to keep stuff like that out of your fuel system. All right, so we got our new filter. We're going to put it on the fuel intake, get it seated in there. Push it all the way down. All right, so we're just going to clean this up a little bit, clean some of the dirt off of it. Clean the, the uh, threads. Alright. And then on the bowl, we're going to take this old gasket off the bowl. That's going to be trash. And then we're going to clean up this contact surface. Clean up our bowl. We're going to clean the outside of it. All right, so we're just going to clean that all up a little bit. Now we're going to take our new gasket and we're going to put it right there where it goes. Now, again, here's the tricky part you got to make sure it stays there. All right? up the locking ring take a look at that gasket make sure it's still good it's on there like it's supposed to be and we are seated really good like that let that drop down let's get a couple turns on that ring as far as you can get it so that it doesn't move. Now, this is normally where I would change this gasket but I don't have a new one so I'm just gonna leave it on there it looks to be in good shape anyway okay so I'm just gonna put this cap in there for the time being I'm not gonna tighten it down Okay, I just want it in there while I'm working on this. Press that bowl down, keep turning this, okay? Turn it as far as you can turn it so it won't turn anymore. 
And then we're going to take our wrench and we're going to finish it up. Okay. Now, when you get the wrench on there, push down on this bowl and give it a, a little bit of a turn as far as you can get it. Pop the wrench off. And let it go again. This takes a few minutes, but the important part is make sure you're holding this bowl down so that gasket don't slip. Keep turning. All right, we're getting to the end. Good and cinched down. You don't want to power this on there, but you want to make sure it's on there nice and solid. Okay? Normally I carry a five gallon diesel can with me. Uh, you're going to need some clean diesel fuel at the end of this project to pour into the top of the filter and prime the filter. Uh, I left my can at home, so I'm going to have to improvise a little. I primed this old windshield washer can with some clean diesel twice and rinsed it out. So it should be clean enough for us to put some clean diesel in and use it at the end of our project. Uh, you can buy these little pumps uh, at the truck stops for about $12 or $13. And I'm just going to use this to siphon some fuel out of my tank. Uh, I've done this before with my five gallon can and just pumped it right out of the pump when I'm getting fuel. That's a lot easier to do. Since I left it at home, I'm going to have to go old school with it. I gotta pump it until it gets going. And it's actually siphoning it right now, so it'll fill up on its own. You can see the level slowly climbing in it. The diesel filled to the top. I pulled the hose out, pumped the rest of it back into the fuel tank. I gotta sit on my catwalk for the time being until I finish this up, and then I'll clean it out. Now we've got a gallon of clean diesel to pour into our filter at the end. And so the last thing we're going to do is we have to prime this bulb, this globe, with fuel. So we're going to put a filter in there, so we don't, I mean a uh, funnel, so we don't make a giant mess. And then I'm going to start pouring this clean diesel in there. Now you can see it pouring in there. I want to pour this until I can actually see it about a quarter to a third away up the filter. Got about a half a gallon left in our can. Okay, good. So we're going to get it up to about right there and then we're going to turn the key on so the fuel pump can start sucking that fuel down. Well, I didn't mean to put it that high, but when we turn the fuel pump on, it's going to suck that down a little bit anyway. All right, you can see the level dropping a little. I don't have the cap in the top of it yet because I want the bottom of that bulb to get full and I want the filter to be, you know, thoroughly saturated. So the fuel pump's taking it in. Now I'm going to shut the key off. All right, I've shut the key off. Now I'm gonna put the cap in the top. We want this just hand tight. Don't want it to be able to suck air through the top. And that should be it. Now I'm gonna turn the key again, let the pump run for about 30 seconds, then I'm going to turn it over. <laughs> and that's it. It's changed. If you find this video helpful, go down to the bottom and hit subscribe so you can be alerted when I post other videos on how to take care of your Kenworth T680 with a Cummins ISX 2350.
All right, when you're uh, when you're changing this fuel water separator filter, it is going to make a little bit of a mess. You're going to have some waste uh, diesel. Don't put that back in your tank. You're going to see a bunch of black flakes in it. You don't want to put that back in your fuel. Make sure you dispose of it properly. Take it to a shop and say, hey, can I dump this in your waste fuel? They'll let you, all right? Uh, ask them if you can give them your, your old waste filter. They'll be happy to take of it and dispose of it. Just don't, don't do like some of these guys and drain your crap out on the ground and throw your filter in the trash. That's not the right way to dispose of it and it's illegal.